Hello parents, my name is Stacy Mosley and I am the Elementary Curriculum Supervisor of Math and ELA. It is a pleasure to be able to reach out to all of you in order to share some of the exciting changes that have occurred in math and English language arts over the past few years. To begin, I'm sure it does not come as a surprise when I mention that Pennsylvania has adopted a new set of standards for both math and ELA. Those standards are now called the PA Core Standards. The good news is that the old PA Legacy Standards were closely aligned to the new PA Core Standards. However, we did see slight shifts in both ELA and math. For instance, in ELA, students are now reading more informational text than in years past. The PA Core and our curriculum actually balance the amount of literary and nonfiction text equally. Furthermore, students are being asked to closely read and analyze complex texts at a much deeper level to include not only defining what the text means, but to go further and look at the craft and structure that the author uses and how it affects our reading. Additionally, in writing, instructional emphasis is being placed on the different modes of writing and writing traits specific to each mode so that students are able to use evidence to inform or make an argument in their writing. In math, there is greater focus on fewer topics. Rather than racing to cover many topics in a mile-wide, inch-deep curriculum, the new standards focus deeply on building conceptual understanding, procedural skills, and problem-solving for the following. Grades K through 2 focus on building concept skills and problem-solving related to addition and subtraction. Grades 3 through 5 focus on building concept skills and problem-solving related to multiplication, and division of whole numbers and fractions, while grade six focuses on ratios and proportional relationships and early algebraic expressions and equations. The following videos, one for ELA and one for math, will provide an overview of PA core standards, our North Penn curriculum, research-based instructional practices employed in our classrooms, and finally, we'll share resources for both you and your child. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about our elementary ELA and math curriculum. Hello, this is Stacy Mosley, the Elementary Curriculum Supervisor of Math and English and Language Arts, and I'm here to share with you a short video clip of our math curriculum and our math instructional practices that you will see in place in the elementary classrooms. And by the end of this video, I'm hoping this will allow you to become more familiar with our standards-based curriculum and more familiar with what the students are doing and learning in class, knowing, having a better understanding of our research-based instructional practices. Additionally, at the end, we'll preview supports that um, could help you at home with your students in regards to math. So um, as I had shared in the ELA presentation, our curriculum um, is aligned to the PA core standards. We had talked about that the standards define what the no students should know and be able to do by the end of the year, and our curriculum, our instruction, and our assessments are aligned to those PA core standards. The standards define clear learning goals for the student and developmental learning patterns over time. It uses consistent language and coupled with our curriculum, it ensures that students at all 13 elementary schools are learning the same thing, though it might be in different approaches, but they're learning the same thing so that students may move from one school to another and still be getting the same curriculum aligned to the standards. So we're going to take a look at the standards categories. Um, like ELA, our old legacy standards and the new PA core standards were pretty closely aligned. Um, ELA was a little bit closer than math because in math the big change was not only do the standards define the content that the students will need to know, they also define mathematical practice. So the standards in math stress both the procedural skills which is the standards mathematical practice, and the conceptual understanding that students need in order to apply, apply that critical information they need to succeed at higher levels. Our K-5 to standards provide students with a solid foundation in whole numbers, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, fractions, and decimals, and help students build the foundation to successfully apply more demanding math concepts and procedures and move into the application piece. They also provide detailed guidance to teachers on how to navigate their way through topics such as fractions and negative numbers and geometry because it progresses from grade to grade. 
And then our grade six um, standards and on, it's actually six through 12, um, knowing that the students have built a strong foundation at K to five, they'll do hands-on learning in geometry, algebra, probability, and statistics. And students who've mastered the content and skills through sixth and seventh grade will be better prepared for algebra when they come to it. So if we look at, I just wanted to show you some standard samples because sometimes out there, um, you know, it's kind of like demystifying what the standards look like. And this is in algebraic concepts. One of the um, one of the standards categories under algebraic concepts is operations and algebraic thinking. And you can see how it progresses from this is what pre-K students should be able to all the way up to fifth grade. So the standards go K to five, and then six through twelve. There's two separate documents. And here's a sample of numbers and operations, again, where it's intentionally left blank. It's because the students weren't developmentally ready for that. But in grades K, as far as numbers and operations in base 10, students should be able to use place value to compose and decompose numbers within 19, all the way up to grade 5, apply place value concepts to show an understanding of operations and rounding as they pertain to whole numbers and decimals. These are fur further defined into the competencies that students will need to do, and we define those in our curriculum as well. So if we move into our curriculum, what really is curriculum? Curriculum is not the standards. It's not a textbook. It's not a program. Those are all resources that we use to support our curriculum. So it is a document or plan that defines the content to be learned by students and the intended outcomes for that learning. And what it's like, it's like a road map. So it says, we want to get from point A to point Z. How are we going to get there along the way? So it, um, it, it contains pacing, and it's the instructional plan of how we're going to get them to meet the standards. Furthermore, um, if we look at curriculum, we talk about is what the students should know, understand, and be able to do. What they should know are the key concepts and the vocabulary involved in math or ELA for that matter. And then understand, that's the essential questions or the big ideas in relation to those concepts. And then do are the competencies. So what do they need to do to ensure that they have mastered it? And so I'm just going to show you a quick sample of our math, one of our math curriculum frameworks. So this comes from fourth grade, and all of our math frameworks look the same. And as you can see, we define our big ideas, the essential questions, the um, PA core standards that they're linked to, and then we also define those key competencies or the skills underneath each one, along with the math practices. So teachers not only need to be teaching the content, they also need to be teaching certain math processes. And this is really the different piece with the new PA core standards is that it's not just about the content, it's also about teaching them processes for solving. And then um, we also define any new vocabulary that would come up, and then you can see we also put our assessments and our resources. And again, in math, our biggest resource is the Go Math program, and then in ELA, it is the Journeys program. But again, that's not our curriculum, that's just a resource we use to support it. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the instruction the instruction that you will see in the classrooms and how students are learning. All of our instruction, our instructional practices, are based on current research. So in ELA, like we talked about, we use the balanced literacy framework of instruction. In math, we use the CRA sequence of instruction. We use problem solving, and teachers will be building math fluency with students. So to begin, I'm going to talk about the CRA sequence of instruction. That stands for concrete representational and abstract sequence of instruction. The purpose of teaching through a concrete to representational to abstract sequence of instruction is to ensure that students truly have a thorough understanding of the math concepts and skills they are learning. When students are allowed to first develop a concrete understanding of the math concept or skill, then they're much more likely to perform that math skill and truly understand the math concepts at the abstract level. So what is it? Each math concept or skill is first modeled with concrete materials, chips, unifex cubes, base 10 blocks, beans and beans six pattern blocks where the students actually have hands-on learning with it. And then students are provided many opportunities to practice and demonstrate mastery using those concrete materials. Then the math concept skill is next modeled at the representational 
or semi-concrete level, which involves drawing pictures that represent the concrete objects previously used. So tallies, dots, circles, stamps that imprint pictures, and so forth. And then again, students are provided many opportunities to practice and demonstrate mastery at that level. Finally, the math concept skill is finally modeled at the abstract level, using only numbers and mathematical symbols. And that is how most of us were taught. So um, when we went to school, our teachers went directly into the abstract, never defining or establishing that true foundational knowledge in math. And so that's the hard part as a parent when your child's coming home and you have to help them with um, maybe the representational piece and they're trying to put that on paper and show that. So I understand that that's the hard part. And later in this, I'll show you how you can have support. But um, so that's the concrete to represent, representational to abstract. Um, the problem solving piece. T you will see that teachers are giving plenty of opportunity for students to do problem solving. So students will have regular opportunities in class to work independently and collaboratively to solve problems and share multiple methods of solution. Teachers are incorporating problem solving into their lessons so that students can use higher levels of thinking and are applying that content knowledge and procedural skill knowledge to solve the problem. Additionally, both of our math coaches and our literacy coaches for the district are working with teachers to support the literacy skills needed to solve these problems. That's a big barrier we see as we look at um, the higher levels of thinking. And I don't think anybody can dispute that we want our students to be able to be thinking at these higher levels. There's a lot of literacy involved, which sometimes tends to be the hiccup for the students. So we have our coaches working with the teachers in order to support that. And then you'll also see teachers building math fluency. And math fact fluency is the quick and effortless or automatic recall of basic math facts. So the reason we're focusing on this is that we know that when students achieve automaticity with these facts, that means that they're storing them in their long-term memory and they've attained a level of mastery, mastery that enables them to retrieve them from their long-term memory. If they are only in their short-term memory or they're using um, their fingers or um, drawing pictures to try and figure out the most basic of, fac basic of facts, then um, they're using too much of their short-term memory that should be freed up to solve the more advanced problems. Okay, so that's some of the things you'll see. So you'll see, if you go in the classroom, you'll see kids working with the concrete um, materials, you'll see them moving into an, uh, representational drawings, and then you'll see them doing the traditional math that we've always done where it's just paper and pencil, solving the problems, but what we're trying to do is truly build that foundational understanding of what goes behind it first. And then as far as your resources, um, of course the elementary curriculum guide is a simple overview of what the kids are learning in all subject areas, so that's one thing you could go to. Um, we'll, we'll also be working on um, rebuilding our um, North Penn website so that we can get those curriculum frameworks up for you as well, so you can see those. Um, the classroom teacher is a huge resource. If your child is struggling, especially with homework or anything like that, you can contact the classroom teacher. Having been a classroom teacher for over 15 years, there is nothing wrong with when you're doing homework, if you write a little note to the teacher saying, um, Catherine had trouble with this problem. Um, we worked it out this way. Please, you know, see if you can help her with it. That is not a problem at all. And then another resource we have, and I think in math you might be a little bit more familiar with it, is the Think Central um, website. So if you can bear with me a second, I'm going to toggle to that. There we go. And um, if you go to Think Central, it'll take you to a home screen where you have to choose um, your state, your school district, and so forth. It's like a drop-down menu. And then you're going to put in your student ID and your student um, your student's ID and their password. And that is both the same. It's their lunch number. It's their student ID number. So it's their lunch number, their library number. You just put it in twice and it takes them here. This is our Think Central platform through Hewitt and Mifflin Harcourt. And it actually gives us information for both um, our ELA and our math. So if you go to my library, if you click on my library, this will come up. Okay, and right now I'm in the mathematics page. You can also go to the reading page, and there's information that will come up for that. You can go to the ELA video for that. 
but I'm going to go back to mathematics. And in this page, you have these Go Math Animated Math Models. If you click on those, those are short tutorials for your student in relation to exactly what they learned that day. So if you get their homework page and they're struggling with it, you could go to these short tutorials. For time's sake, I'm not going to click on it right now. Um, the other thing you have in here that's very helpful is the Go Math Standards Practice Book. This is what the teachers use for homework. So if your child's absent or if your child can't find their homework page and they can contact either someone else or look in their homework book and say it said page 63, you can go into here and print that off. Okay, so that's there. And you can go in and see if your children are having trouble, you can go and print other pages. The other thing that's in here is a reteaching book. It marries with the standards practice book and that if you are inclined and you want to provide your child some extra help at home, the reteaching book would help with that too. And um, there is an e-glossary here, which helps define some of the vocabulary. There's also an iTools for intermediate. Um, it's things like rulers and some of the manipulatives and things like that for you. So that's just a little preview of what you have at home. I hope you enjoyed listening to this presentation. Again, it was just a quick snippet of what our math curriculum and instructional practices look like. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to either contact the school. And if you um, can't get an answer there, or you can contact me directly at the ESC. Thank you.